Hello everyone, my name is Lorenzo and uh, I'm uh, from Loway, I'm the city of Loway and uh, I'm here with uh, Kevin. Hi Kevin. Hi everyone, hi Lorenzo. Kevin is the lead, is the lead developer that uh, managed to get this new release of uh, Qmetrics out and he did a lot of work on <laughs> a lot of areas so he needs a big thanks and a big hug from all of us. <laughs> hi, so, thank you, thank you. We, we are going to be looking at uh, something new that came with this version of Qmetrics. And Kevin, what do you think was the biggest single thing that was changed for this release of Qmetrics? Well, definitely we did a lot of work on the look and feel of the application. We also developed a new feature I think a lot of people will find very interesting, that is the agent timeline and a few other different things that we're going to show you today. Okay, so let's start from the way, from the look and feel. Okay, so now you're going to move to, you're, you're, you should be able to see the new version of Qmetrics 22. It's been actually out for a few days on our RPM repos, but uh, we expect, uh, but consider it's, uh, it's basically new. So Kevin, what, what's new here? Well, here we can see the new uh, login page. I will log in immediately. So just to show you how uh, the new home page looks like. So we kept the same uh, colorful style, let's say, but uh, there's been a lot of work uh, all throughout the software to improve the usability and the way it looks. Also as well, this time Qmetric ships with uh, the dark theme as uh, it used to ship already before, but it also has a monochromatic theme now for people that uh, prefer more a sober look throughout the application. So you can see here the dark theme mm -hmm. and uh, still here from the uh, theme page, we can pick the mono theme, which is a more monochromatic theme. We can see it's uh, more uh, black and white for different types of, uh, like for a more sober look throughout the software. But we will stick to the default theme for now, just because that's what uh, people are used to basically. And I personally love, so it's, it's yeah, yeah, I, I, like, I like the colors too, honestly. So yeah, so, so that's uh, mainly how the new application looks like and you will see it throughout as we go through the new features. So you're, you're going to see, this is going to be very familiar because it, it's not uh, like anything was totally um, changed in a way that it's hard to understand. It's basically the same thing, but it's, uh, the idea was to make it softer on the eye so it would be easier to use uh, for long periods. That's what a lot of customers are actually doing. So let's start from uh, from uh, the reports that are historic. Yes, absolutely. So I, I will move here to the historical reports now. Uh, keep in mind, most of uh, the features that I'm about to show are based on some form of either popular demand or user feedback that we uh, decided that was, uh, you know, a valid uh, feedback that we decided to implement. So as you can see here already in the top part of uh, the report page, a lot of things have changed already. So first of all, we can see here in the top right, there is a recap for the call stats of the report. That is to give you a, an immediate look to what's going on in the reports right now. And how many uh, calls are, are physically in the report. So you get an idea if you're totally off or you've been taking a week, a day instead of a week or vice versa. Exactly. You can see here some of the new colors in uh, the charts as well. And uh, from here as well, you can see we don't have all the icons on the top right anymore, but we have moved everything here to this menu on the left. These are all uh, the same uh, features you used to have before. So here you have the settings for the reports. You can add new data blocks. You can clone a report. You can create a new report from here. And especially you can export the report in PDF or Excel format from there. So what you were used to having here on the top right is now on the left. And still talking about this panel here, another thing that I feel like is important to note is that something that a lot of customers asked for was the ability to basically change some parameters here and apply the changes 
without having to save the report. So as you can see here, we can now change the time and it doesn't reload automatically, but it asks for user confirmation first. So you can change a lot of different parameters without the report constantly reloading under you. So this saves a lot of computing time, makes it more efficient, more easy to use. And we thought that was a very uh, good feedback from uh, some of our customers. Yes. I will save this report for a second, just put it back how it was before. And uh, this is basically uh, everything concerning the time and the way reports are processed. Some other important things though that have been introduced here as now that we are here on the top where also the report filtering is. I would like to show another feature that a lot of customer asks for, which is the ability once I, for example, add a filter here. So let's say now I'm filtering for this agent mark. You can see the calls are now 300, they're not 3000 anymore. Yeah. But what I can do now is I can click on a filter and I can change the value directly without having to delete the filter and putting it in again. So I'll be able to do this. You can see the apply button is coming up here. And you can see the number of calls has changed, of course, because uh, I changed the, the agent to a different agent. And another important thing we can do now that wasn't available before is the ability for us to negate this filter. So when you can see now the filter is surrounded in red brackets, what this means is if I apply the filter, what I'm doing is I'm basically asking for all the calls and all the data that is related to all the agent except for this one. So you can see the number here is a short way up because it's all the agent except for this one. I am personally quite excited about this feature because uh, um, as you likely know, it's possible in a lot of, uh, in a lot of filters to use regular expressions. Regular yes. expressions are very easy to build uh, on a, in a positive way so that I, I want to this and this, but uh, it's, uh, it's more complex to build uh, regular expressions that either capture multiple things or worse, uh, negate the capturing of multiple things because they are hard to code. With uh, this, uh, by using these uh, negative filters, basically you can create a very simple positive regular expression, put them together like and or or, so it's, uh, they're, they're going to, to, to be together as a single construct. And then if you want to negate them, you just put a not filter around them so that you get everything but. And it's way easier and uh, I believe it's, it's quite uh, interesting and likely we're going to have a bit of uh, a small tutorial out in the next uh, days, maybe next week. Yes, absolutely. We, we are definitely have a tutorial for this and make sure that customers know how to effectively use this new feature. Okay, so it's um, the, the other, uh, uh, apart from this, that is in general on the page and uh, you can see definitely the, the, the way it looks like. There is one big thing that is, uh, that, that is uh, on the reports that's called the agent timeline. Yes, I will show that to you immediately and we can see it from here. Okay, it's warning me that I haven't saved changes, but I will not save this. Go back to the uh, to this other reports where I can take a look at the details for the agent. So when we are talking about um, reports that concern the agents, often we see these reports that are showing us, for example, how many sessions an agent had, how many pauses and things like that, right? So. Um, what a lot of customers always asked for was the ability to basically have a deep dive into what an agent was doing. So as we can see here, we now have this timeline for the agents that essentially shows us uh, the sessions of the agents on different queues, the activity for this, so how many calls they've taken, how much time they spent talking, the lost attempts or the idle time for an agent on this session. So we can see it was from when to when and we can see a very detailed breakdown of all the pauses and the sessions for an agent if we want to go in even more detail for uh, sessions that actually have calls so not like this one that has no calls but let's say this one that has two calls i can click on it and it will show me uh, the specifics of these uh, calls so for example here we see i have two calls and by clicking on it it will show me which details calls? yes Exactly. I can move then throughout the timeline, click on the different sessions and see 
uh, all the different calls that an agent has made. So this allows us to have a better understanding of the activity of an agent at first glance. This is something that we wanted to do for a long time. So I'm happy we can finally bring it. Yes, and, uh, and a lot of I people asked for this because it's uh, while Qmetrics was basically producing the same information before, it's um, it was uh, it was not hard, but it was n n not not especially nice to do to put together the view from in terms of a, the agent session. So agent is present in taking calls and which calls they are taking. So this is uh, and how many lost attempts uh, they they had during this specific period. So it's quite interesting to be able to see everything in a single screen and to be able to, to, to basically get a sense of what some person was doing during their work day. Yes, also because the lost attempts are a very important metric since when calls arrive on queues, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, uh, figure out if a call was lost, uh, you know, uh, who didn't answer, what was going on at the moment. So the lost attempts can be a good metric for that in a lot of different call distribution models. So we are very excited about this. Probably we're going to have a tutorial about this very soon as well, because uh, it's one of our major features. So look forward to that. And yes, I'm happy we uh, managed to bring this. So just by clicking on the name of an agent, you can then go and see the details about what an agent is doing. Yes. And another uh, thing, as we, we have been talking about something that a lot of people asked for, another thing that a lot of people asked for was a single block export. That is something that Kimetrics used to have and then I'm, I'm personally taking the blame on this because uh, Kevin <laughs> has been leading the group that was saying we need to have this feature back and I was saying oh, who cares people if you want to export you can export everything at once it's not very common and uh, I was totally wrong so <laughs> I'm taking the blame here and um, it's my fault but now it's, um, it's back. Yes, and now we can, um, uh, by popular demand, we can go back and export uh, from uh, here. Now you see, we used to have different options here for every data block. Now you have everything here in a menu that it's easier on the eyes. You can export a single block in PDF or in Excel, just, you, just like you can do the report, but you can do it for a singular block, which is something that we uh, I've received some feedback on and also you can do the things that you used to do before so you can edit the, the name the title the subtitle you can change the columns that are shown in uh, in the table you know the, the usual things you were able to do before they are just now aggregated here plus the singular in export of the block and uh, talking about import and export mm, Another major feature that was introduced in this release is the fact that now we are able to basically export a report as a template. So, for example, let's say you have two different Qmetric systems, or let's say you, you want to share a report template between different users. You can now export a template for a report that will include all the pages, the tables, the different queries and everything. And that can be exported um, in a JSON format by going here and clicking on the export report schema button. Here you can pick a name for your, for your file and this will export a JSON file that can then be downloaded here and then you can import it on another system or another user on the same system here. And you can just drag it inside click on OK, and this will create a report that is exactly the same like the, as the one you exported, minus, of course, the data, because the data is on the system. So you're exporting the template of the report. The, the way it's going to, 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 to look like, which blocks, their sequence, uh, the filters, anything that, that basically explains uh, uh, task metrics what to produce, but the data that it's going to produce it on. And uh, speaking of that, uh, we have um, a new, uh, we have created a, a repository on GitHub, yes. where basically we expect to, to share different uh, reports um, so that you can, uh, where uh, basically if uh, there is a specific report that is of interest for a specific industry, instead of putting so many reports in Qmetrics that 
people maybe want the uh, auto in the stoichiometrics that people maybe won't care about. Our idea was to create a single place where they can be shared. So you can go there and download uh, specific reports you care about, or if you create some report that you think would be useful for uh, somebody else and want to share it, you can just put it there so that other people can benefit from it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we look forward for people, to people contributing to it. And, uh, you know, in general, what we try to do is try to make uh, Qmetrics as uh, available to as many different industries as possible, because, of course, the, you know, this field is very varied in terms of applications and use cases. So I'm happy we have a place now where we can put different reports that might work differently for different people in different industries. Okay, that's, uh, that's really interesting. And I think that there is a lot uh, that, that can come out of that. Talking about other new features, actually not uh, in, a, in a sense, all the features that have been rebuilt is QA. Yes, so basically Qmetrics always had the ability for uh, quality assessment for supervisors to listen to recordings and do quality assessment on calls. So uh, by going here in the details of a call and opening uh, what was introduced in the late, last version, so we have here the details and the timeline, we now have the QA tab here. The recordings have been moved under this tab under the QA tab, and as you can see here in the top right, it will give you all the recordings for a specific call that you open. Mm, this is important because not only you can find uh, uh, actual audio recordings here, but uh, you can also find all other types of file. You can see here a TXT file. Of course, the audio player is disabled, but you can still download the file from here by clicking on the download button on the right. And uh, this is important because there's a way for, uh, you know, for communities to aggregate all the files that are related to a call, to an interaction somehow. Because, uh, as you know, as definitely a lot of people are, are uh, not just storing recordings anymore, but they are starting, the starting or they are actually storing, uh, for example, transcriptions that t 20 yes. years ago used to be science fiction and now are uh, a dime a dozen. So <laughs> and are scarily good, yes. Yeah, scarily good, exactly. So, and uh, in this way, in Qmetrics, you can put together basically all the information that is related to one specific call and be able to retrieve it uh, efficiently. Exactly. So basically what we did here was uh, rebuild the uh, Q&A model and the QA model. And from here, you now have the form. These are the same forms as Qmetrics used to have before. So if you have forms already, they will be kept. It's just a, a new yeah, interface. Before you go forward, can you give us a brief explanation of what uh, the QA does and why you should use it? Yes, absolutely. So um, the QA module is uh, there for a variety of different situations, but mainly I would say there are two biggest uh, to the two the bigger use cases are two so one is supervisor grading supervisors grading calls uh, so listening to agents uh, interacting with customers and uh, going through the recording also with the recording so uh, here in the interface you can also add markers to a call so let's say i want to mark this moment specifically i want to say here something happened and i want to give it a color i can then add a marker that will then be able to uh, let me listen from that point in the recording but um, this way the supervisor can essentially uh, understand how the user interaction is going between the, uh, the agent and the customer and see where the agent can improve. We can grade it under different sections. You can create all different types of metrics and scores. And this has, a, let's say, a double uh, utility because it's uh, useful for the supervisor to know how the agent is behaving uh, during the call, how it's performing, the different uh, types of interactions, but also it does notify unless you specify not to, but it uh, by default it notifies the agent about uh, the fact that uh, there was a certain scoring or certain notes left so that the agent has kind of like an immediate feedback on uh, how they are working and how they are performing. 
Another uh, very important use case instead is for uh, uh, post-call surveys, for satisfaction surveys for customers, because everything that you see here in terms of uh, adding scores to the uh, QA forms can be done through API as well. So uh, a lot of customer, a lot of uh, our clients use this to uh, send surveys to the customers after maybe they interact with their services, and uh, you know through IVR usually uh, with the use of our APIs they can fill out. Uh, these surveys that are then stored in Qmetrics and you can of course report on them and uh, see by agent by different by the different metrics and targets uh, how they have been performing so basically the idea of QA is that most of the things that Qmetrics measures are about what surrounds a call so how long it uh, it took uh, to, for it to be answered uh, who answered it how many calls that were answered and stuff but uh, once you know that the call, for example, was answered quickly, you have no idea of what went on during the call. So I guess that uh, if you're offering a service, uh, you, you, you do have an idea of how the call was handled. So you can create a form and basically decide a grid of things that have to be tracked, and you can track them across multiple queues, so maybe for different customers explaining and showing what you're doing. And uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, get uh, the scores uh, out of multiple calls for a specific agent. So, for example, uh, if an agent has some issue in, uh, I don't know, remembering to greet the, the customer appropriately at the beginning of the call, it will immediately show because his scores for this specific question will be maybe lower. And so the, it will be possible to address this specific issue for this specific person and the specific person, the agent, will be immediately aware of how he's doing. So he has a quick feedback loop and can know, and, and he knows where he has to improve. Exactly, exactly. So uh, just to give you an example, this is how form is uh, graded. So you can see here by putting different values, we have different colors that are associated with different types of uh, scores and results. This is anything you see here can be configured by the users when we create a form. But let's say we give different uh, all these different rows to someone, all these different grades, and then we save it so we can see that now we do have a uh, recap here with all the averages and all the questions can be individually weighed differently. So each question can have a different weight that goes and impacts differently on uh, the different sections the items are grouped under. So you have the engagement section here that has some series of questions and the resolution section here you can see that they all have different averages. So it's very easy to uh, basically divide the items in different sections and then have different averages. You can have a total score here, you have the average, and then you can leave a note for uh, a specific uh, call or for a specific question. So if you wanna see, you can add a note for the call call or uh, or you can add uh, a note here, for example, and it will appear under the specific question here. You can see this item has one uh, note, and you can see here the code of the uh, question is listed under the note. Okay. Um, I think this is everything we need to cover regarding here the new QA. This was, is... Uh, uh, before we go forward, there was yes? a question on, uh, on the live about whether uh, whether uh, of why the 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 call uh, the list of calls is not uh, under details anymore and but the list uh, but it was moved the the, the player the audio ah, the record player yes well uh, generally before we used to have three different tabs and um, uh, the recordings used to used to be in their own little tab there, but generally, since you listen to recording, uh, usually during the QA part, uh, uh, we decided it was better to uh, put them together. We have received some immediate feedback about this fact, about the fact that it was more convenient to have it separately. And uh, so we are planning a very quick upgrade in the next few days 
where essentially even if you don't have a QA form, you will still be able to access the recordings here, even without all the QA part, just the simple player. So uh, people that are maybe a bit confused by the fact that it's not uh, in the same place anymore or find it more convenient to have it there should uh, uh, have this feedback immediately integrated in our process because we are already basically working on uh, uh, having it more easily accessible even without the whole QA form. Okay, thank you. And um, well, another, uh, the other big area that we worked on uh, was uh, that, that uh, had very significant changes uh, in terms of uh, the way it looks like is the wallboards. Wallboards are um, for us uh, the, the how can I say one of the more important the most important features here because uh, a lot of people love them and uh, when we introduced the, the new wallboards I don't remember a few years ago two or three years <coughs> ago we started uh, by by design let's say to give a very minimal documentation so we didn't uh, do much on how it's going to work just to see what would happen and what happened is that we started to see people that were basically creating their own wallboards without uh, without having uh, specific issues and so they would appear in our support line uh, because they had some other uh, issue and uh, our uh, support technicians would connect to them and see that they were using wallboards but they did everything on their own so it's been for us uh, wallboards are i believe uh, the, the structure integration of wallboards uh, and uh, reports are the way forward in Qmetrics that at the moment are still two separate silos. But anyway... Yes. Absolutely no. In fact, that is the reason why the wallboard is, uh, with this release especially, uh, completely replacing the uh, real-time page that is uh, still around for legacy purposes but is basically deprecated at this point. Everything you could do in the real-time page you can do here. And back we. Back. And better, yes, and we can also do some, uh, in this release, we have some additional features that weren't there before. Um, just in general, you can see already the um, graphical appearance of the wallboard is different, has been improved, and we are already working on some of the immediate feedback we got from the release to improve it further. But generally, uh, we have new colors for the widgets. We have a new graphical appearance for everything. And uh, now one of the most important things that you can do in uh, the new world boards is here in the tables, you can now uh, set alarms for the columns just by clicking on them. So let's say here, I want to set an alarm for this one and I want it to be a yellow alarm when it's under three. I can do it and now it will work for the whole column. So let's say here, I want a red alarm. If it's under five, you will see that all three light up because this is now an alarm that works for the whole column so it's very easy to set up alarms now you just click on the cells and set up the alarms that you want and this is something that i think a lot of people will find easier than it used to be before because before you had to go inside the table and click a bunch of different settings for each individual alarm which became uh, pretty tedious after a while so this way i think is more intuitive and uh, aside from this, you can also, something that most people don't know here from the, um, uh, the wall board, you can right click and you can access the, the agent actions and the call actions, which is something that not, mo mo not, a lot, not a lot of people use, but from here you have the agent actions and you can add members to the queues. You can do anything you could do from the real time, right? So you can add members to a queue, you can remove them, pause them, unpause them, or change their pause. Or alternatively, you also have call actions, which instead allow you to pick one of the live calls that are going on and you can either hang them up, monitor them, you can uh, uh, transfer them, so you have all, a different set of actions that you can perform from the wallboard page. So basically at this point there is no excuse to keep running the old uh, real-time page uh, because this one is way better and since from this release I believe it's it's way way better because uh, not only it will look better but it has something interesting inside. 
Yes, absolutely. So uh, let me create a new world board just to show you the new features. So uh, one thing that we think will really open up the world boards here is that we added a couple new uh, widgets here. You can see the data block widget, which is the one I want to show you now. And uh, what it does is allows the user to add to the world board any of the tables and or data blocks uh, how you want to call them that are present in the reports so all uh, 150 plus different metrics that you have let's say i want to add i don't know uh, ok03 for example which is the agents on queue i can just put it here and as you can see now i have the same metric that i used to have in the reports i can now have it on the wall board of course it's calculated on the same time period as the wall board which by default is usually since midnight of the current day but it can be of course configured in your system parameters but as you can see it allows for a lot of customization now because it basically opens up uh, for the wall board the whole uh, spectrum of different data blocks that are that have been up until now only available in the reports exactly uh, and uh, not only they were available uh, in the reports but uh, as now they are in the world board they are live so they are going to be recomputed in real time and uh, as things happen so you can see what for example what is happening during your day or uh, who is taking calls now and of course then you can go to the to the reports if you need uh, to to drill in and do and filter or do something that is more complex so you're yes, basically yes. looking uh, at two, 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 um, uh, two sides of the same coin. You also have not only the data blocks, but also the related charts. So I can open a chart. For example, I know that OK03 also has a chart. And I can do this. And basically what it does is it will load the chart for the same report. And you can see it has the same data inside. And it's basically a reflection of what is going on. You can then resize it and create it. But of course, this allows for a lot more uh, customization in your wall boards because instead of having like 20 widgets, now you have like 170. If you, <laughs> if you count all the different tables that you can add to it. Yeah, maybe more. So maybe the, more. Yeah, I think it's we do two hundred at this point. The idea is that um, with the wall boards, uh, we we call, historically we call them wall boards because you can create things that uh, are meant to be used, for example, on a beamer. So maybe you don't want a, a list or a table, but you just want a, a pie or a chart that that is showing uh, at a glance what is happening, or you want one big number appearing. Or you can use it now completely as a real-time page, so something you're going to use likely with, with the browser on your computer, so you can click on things and you'd like, uh, and you can explore tables and uh, read things because you're actually looking at it uh, from, uh, uh, from from a close from a close distance. So it's up to you to decide that the same mechanism can be used to create both type of things and everything that is in between. So it's up to you to create something that is that is. Uh, useful in uh, for your use case and you have basically a unified experience you don't have to learn two different things yes it's very interesting every time we uh, assist a customer seeing uh, the different things that they created on their own because it's always very different from what you imagine uh, customers would end up doing in the end so it's always very interesting to see absolutely and I also see that there is a new family of widgets. Yes, so basically uh, what we do have here is, uh, uh, well, what I, uh, I want to show you here is actually the um, custom HTML widget first, because we do have a new uh, widget for that as well. This is something that has been requested a lot and uh, it's nothing complicated. Basically, it's just an iframe that allows the uh, to uh, embed their own page or CRM or, you know, their own, for example, in this case, I picked a clock, but as you can see here is a fully functional web page. You just put the URL and it embeds it inside. Uh, so this is just, uh, just to show you this quickly because... Mm, exactly. There is advertising too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
a lot of a lot of customer wanted this in particular but uh, something else that i wanted to talk about that i think uh, is uh, also um, very interesting is uh, the fact that you can now uh, as i was showing you before on the reports you can export the uh, wallboards and import them as well so now you can uh, the same way that we did in the reports you can export a json template for a wallboard that can then be shared with other systems or other users and we will also uh, add these to the repository we're talking about so that you know customers can uh, contribute if they want and we can uh, share different types of wallboards for different types of situations exactly and uh, if you want uh, if you if you want to take a bit of advice from me and want to test this out there is a wallboard that we created if you are upgrading an existing system there is a, a wallboard that i think is interesting that is basically showing the numbers that uh, are waiting to be recalled so basically people that contacted you during the day and uh, uh, had a lost call or a short call so they didn't really talk to anybody and um, but the people that were uh, so these people uh, when um, if they didn't have an inter a positive interaction they are going to appear on this list and once they had a positive interaction for example they called back and were able to talk to somebody or uh, they were able to to or they or, or we, they were recalled they will appear on a separate list. So this wallboard is uh, available and um, if you are upgrading a system, my suggestion is to, to try and download it from GitHub and try and installing it on your system so you have an idea of how it works. Plus it it's can be pretty useful for uh, in real life uh, just to see the people that you need to call back. Yes, yes, exactly. And yes, now you were talking about new family of uh, widgets and blocks. I wanted to show this because I think this uh, is a little more technical, but might be of interest to someone. We have uh, created a new um, editor here for custom data blocks that basically allows us to create uh, a new data blocks from scratch based on existing ones. So I will show you what I mean immediately. So here, let's open this report. In this report here, I have this uh, session and pause duration uh, data block. This is an existing one, it's AG02. That shows us basically the average session time for each agent, the pauses, the sessions, and stuff like that. So. Let's say that we want to create a custom data block based on this one, but maybe just only shows the first two columns of this. Okay. So I would go here to the uh, custom data blocks and uh, I will show you this one. For example, here we can see I have created a new data block here. I called it number of poses. It doesn't have a chart and uh, uh, the way it is uh, constructed basically is by saying I want the first and the second column of this specific block. This is a very, it's a MySQL, it's a SQL like uh, language, not 100% the same, but it's inspired by that, of course. And you can see here now, if I go back to the report, now that I have created this custom data block, I have it here. I just need to go to the custom blocks here and I can find it here in the poses no chart. And by adding it, you can see I now have this uh, custom block, which is based on this one, but it only has uh, uh, two columns. the two columns that I picked. Now, this is uh, not necessarily different from uh, having uh, the normal one, the regular original uh, data block and then filtering by column. But the reason that we do this is because uh, if that doesn't add any features directly, it allows us now to create uh, charts where there were no charts before. So for example, here I've created another one to show you this. It is exactly the same block, same two columns, but you can see here I have uh, added the chart formula and you can find how to create your own charts uh, on our manual. manual. But basically what it does is it creates a pie chart uh, based and it uses column uh, one as 
the X and the column two as the Y. And then if I go here in the agent sessions and I go and look at the custom data blocks, exactly like I did before, I should find the one with the chart as well, which is this one. And it's basically the same, but it also has a chart here, you see. So it is based on this one that had no chart. And, but it now allows us to essentially create our own charts based on uh, data blocks. So if, uh, since uh, some customers, uh, I'm sure will find this useful if they want to, you know, illustrate better some of the more complex metrics that they have in some of the more obscure data blocks that, and maybe, you know, create uh, simpler views of them because sometimes Kmetrics has this, have has you know, a lot of metrics, but it's, maybe not too easy on the eyes when you have too many columns and you have these big tables with a lot of numbers. So this way you can create your own views of uh, blocks and make them simpler. And, you know, it's just in general, we try to make our software as customizable as possible because we cover a lot of different cases. Yes, plus uh, the, the right place for new charts to appear typically is not just the reports, but it's even more the wallboard because of course uh, these new blocks uh, can be used uh, in wallboards uh, just like uh, any other blocks. Yes, the same way as before, you can see them here uh, with, the, with the data block uh, uh, widget. I have imported the same, uh, either the table or the chart. So you can see that uh, the same identical idea that we have them both in the report and the wallboard. Exactly. What uh, custom reports, uh, custom data blocks at the moment uh, are not, uh, are basically, uh, how can I say, a technical preview, meaning that it is an idea that has uh, a long way to go. Um, it's, it's just a start. Uh, so in uh, the, the, the medium term, we expect it to become, to, to basically have a way to get started out of uh, the Kymetrix data blocks as if they were uh, SQL tables, because a lot of people know SQL and it's very powerful and then be able to mix and match things together in order to create reports that uh, in a simple way that were not possible before. And uh, instead of having to go through millions of lines uh, on a database uh, where it may not be very easy to, 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 to find out what, uh, what is the, the correct uh, the border cases and everything that, that basically Qmetrics does, you start from data that Qmetrics has already like pre-processed, so it's way easier and the data set is way smaller. Yes, so, especially especially when you have millions of uh, cores of lines and records. Exactly. And one, uh, one other thing that I believe is the last thing that I believe could be interesting in seeing is that uh, in terms of uh, revamping the look of things is uh, the soft phone. Ah, yes, we have uh, here the soft phone. It has new and improved graphics as well. It has the same features that it used to have, but essentially, as you can tell, the graphical interface here has been uh, revamped and it's been uh, essentially uh, reworked uh, from scratch uh, to give it a new feel and uh, you know to allow for visibility. There's an incredible and uh, in general. The features, as I said, are the same. There is nothing fundamentally different about the soft phone. It is just that we gave it a new face and um, tried to make it more uh, similar to the rest of the software, make sure that everything kind of fit the same theme and the same look and feel. Just a question, but why are you showing us the soft phone that is available both? Uh, um, everybody knows, I guess, that the, the soft phone is within the agents page, but now you are showing us the soft phone the soft phone in the wallboard. What, what is the software in the wallboard for? Yes, basically, um, something that came up during the years is the fact that supervisors, you know, want to monitor a, the activity of what's going on, right? And they are usually uh, looking at everything that is happening right now, for example, live calls and something like that. But something that a uh, supervisor also do especially they used to do from the real time is the fact that they want to uh, monitor a call. So let's say I pick a call here and I want to monitor it. I can then give it an extension to call. That is going to be my soft phone. That is a and in this case, 
Yes, in this case, since you are in the wallboard already, you can have a soft phone here in the wallboard that allows you to uh, monitor a call. You can either barge spy or whisper uh, on a call. So uh, depending if you want the agent to know that you're listening, the customer as well, for some reason, or if you want no one to know, uh, you just pick the correct mode. You pick your own extension, and then this will essentially call your extension. You can answer. Uh, the phone and then you can monitor a call from the wallboard itself while you are still looking at the data and you don't need to have a physical phone you can just do that with headphones from within your browser okay so this is this will make your life uh, easier of course um, I think that uh, that uh, this is uh, basically uh, that uh, we, we have when we went through the most important things that were changed in this version if you have uh, some um, specific uh, questions, feel free to ask them uh, on the chat if you are uh, looking at it now or uh, to, to, to contact us. Uh, f for now, the, um, what, we want to know, what we want to say is that this version of Qmetrics is already available on, um, on um, the download uh, on the repositories. We will have a small upgrade out uh, like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Uh, so if you are running an on-prem system, you can update it um, immediately. And uh, this is no, it is uh, totally feasible. If you're running live instead, we are going to do the upgrade uh, later this week. So you're going to, you don't have to do anything. You're just going to find that, uh, the, that your version of Qmetrix is going to be, to be slightly different and upgraded to 22 nothing special that, that you have to do. Absolutely. And uh, of course, if you have uh, any questions or doubt or feedback about the new version, you can just let us know at support uh, at lowway.ch. So uh, just let us know because, of course, we are uh, keeping our eyes out and our ears open for any feedback, especially in this uh, since we have just released. So uh, if there's anything, you know, that uh, you're wondering or we think you think we could you could do it better, absolutely let us know. OK. So, uh, for now, I, as I see there are no questions, uh, I um, thank you for watching and uh, um, feel free to download the new version of Qmetrix and uh, upgrade to it and uh, I hope that you liked uh, our, uh, the time spent with us and it was uh, productive and interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.